the private painting, which we can yeah. see here. Let's look at the private painting. You mentioned, you mentioned these uh, like crossbars or uh, the... Yeah, and that's one you have here, up here at the top. Can you see there's a vertical line here? Yeah, I can, yeah. Yeah, and that is one of these markings with a ruler. And there is another one. Come on, yeah. There are other points uh, like this down here. There's another vertical line that has been so so that you really can you, you could almost imagine that you have four drawings mm -hmm. that you fit in next to each other really in order to, to an, uh, sort of an eagle's eye to de detect that this you know small line yes refers to a, a grid or whatever. yeah but well there's not a grid but there, there is some <coughs> kind of, of fixed points at various points. And otherwise, it is very detailed drawn. And one little detail is this man sitting here. If I may make him a little bit bigger, you see that the man sitting here cutting himself loose, yeah. but he's been drawn slightly next to it. Mm. You see, the arm is just next to. Yeah. And uh, that is the case with many details in this drawing that they are drawn a little bit to the left of where they are being painted. Mm. So it could be that the drawing had been shifting and then they wanted to correct it in the painting phase. So they must have had a model uh, that they have been using uh, very carefully for this. Well, there's a, a huge amount of detail. Do, do you have any idea how much uh, you know, making such a painting, completing such a painting would, would take? Is it a matter of like months or years or...? or it's not years, but it could be, uh, it could be a month, yes. Uh, because you would need to wait also for the various elements to dry before you could continue. Yeah. Uh, naturally, artists in this period would use both oil paint, but also maybe mixed media that would see uh, uh, oil and, and uh, glue mixed together as an emulsion paint, which would dry quicker, and then you could continue the process afterwards again. If we look at the Glasgow painting, there's a detail I would like to show you, because it's of course the same composition, but down here on this column, we with infrared can see that there is actually a drawing of a man oh. as a head here, looking that way. And this drawing of this figure has never been painted, and it does not exist in any of the other versions, which is quite uh, intriguing. Why would he invent a figure here? On the other hand, this painting is so much different, you can see with all yeah. this, which is typical of Jornimus Bosch. Uh, we can also see that they intended it to be slightly different. You can see the drawing is coming up to a small circle here, which has not been painted. Uh, so there is some more extensive elements. Um, but probably this painting is the one that's farthest away from Bosch. It could very well be the youngest of the four paintings. Um, but it has been changed so much and it also has the signature uh, at the bottom here which uh, says Euronymous Bosch down here, yeah. um, and it is not by Euronymous Bosch, but it is intended to be a Euronymous Bosch for the art market around 1600, we believe. Mm -hmm. So there is a different notion of what is uh, copyright and not copyright in that period compared to our period. Did uh, Bosch's uh, signature actually look like this? Was it, it could look like this. Signature or was it like just no, it is someone wrote the name. Absolutely, uh, very close to what uh, Bosch would do himself. Yes. I see. Yeah. So in that sense, you could say that is, they are talking about making a very close replica of something that intends to be a Bosch, which is mm -hmm. well from a later period. At that time, where would the owners of these uh, pictures? Where would they hang them? Or, or I mean, would the clients be like? regular, I don't know, merchants that would hang these pictures on their I think they would be, be rather wealthy people because the formats are large on most of the paintings. Here the format is small, but it is by assigned artist. So I think it would be the, the, the wealthiest part of society that would have these paintings. And the intriguing thing is, of course, to speculate if you are a merchant and they were some of the uh -huh. richest people yeah. of the period. Why would you have a scene with Christ driving merchant out of the temple and at the same time be a merchant yourself? Mm -hmm. Or would that be to, to show that, well, you are actually not doing the bad thing as a tradesman. You have the morality in, in good, good order. Mm -hmm. But look what, uh, what happens if you're not uh, ethical in the way you trade. 
So there could be all kinds of symbolisms in this. Is there any other detail that you would like to draw our attention to or that I, I uh, didn't know to ask? Or? Uh, I think that, uh, that there's, well, details of, of the, the quack, the dentist yeah. here. Uh, is is interesting, uh, especially the table you have next to him, uh, where we can see that there are a number of things lying there, and they are so different from one painting to the other. Here you have more glasses and some snakes drawn. In the Glasgow version, you have uh, only two pair of glasses. In the private painting, you have three pairs of glasses uh, again. So there are all these differences. But if we look with uh, X-ray, which I believe we also can do, uh, here we can have the story about the thing. We don't want that now. Uh, there should be an X-ray here as well, as far as I recall. How does that work? Ah, here it is. There's the X-ray. And with the X-ray, you can see uh, the, the construction behind the painting. You see all the way through the paint layer. You see here is a little block of wood glued to the back, exactly where there is a join between two planks that were glued together. And you can see over here that there is a crossbar going all the way along uh, that, that kind of stabilizes the entire panel. Uh, and in the private, in the Copenhagen painting, We've had a different uh, image with the X-ray because it has had a, a pocketing. You see there's a lot of bars going in all directions. And again here, this way down. So you get a very disturbed X-ray. But you can still see very clearly that the, the jackets here come out very clearly. The white horse is interestingly not so white as we had anticipated. So it must have been painted with earth colors and not with white pigment whereas this back here is with white pigment, the headgear here as well. So we, we can go in and, and see uh, yeah, how the, the people were, were prepared. The halo around the head of Christ is not showing up, although we, we see it here as a white area. But this white area is not painted, it's simply the ground layer that has not been finished with the halo. There should have been a halo with, with gold, uh, which you see in, in your painting. And there you can also see it very clearly in the under, in, in the, with the X-ray. Sorry, with the X-ray you can see it as well here as, a, mm -hmm. as an indication. So all these techniques combined, yeah, they give you a much better picture of uh, what this is about.